Good morning. I'm going to share with you this morning something about William Carey, who was one of the greatest missionaries that were sent out from the UK. He was born in 1761 and died in 1834. But at the age of 12, he finished his education in Northamptonshire and became a shoemaker. At the age of 14, he was led to Christ by a fellow cobbler. From then on, as a member of the Baptist Church, his one burning desire was to know Jesus Christ and to make him known throughout the world. However, up to this point, British churches had done little in terms of overseas missions, and some Christians tried to dampen his enthusiasm. An older minister had said to him when, he, when Carey had stood up to speak of his vision, the older minister said to him, Sit down, young man. If the Lord wants to convert the heathen, he can do it without your help. Well, Carey didn't sit down because he didn't give up. And in 1792, Carey wrote a paper on missions. And he pointed out that Jesus commissioned his disciples to go and that this laid them under obligation to disperse themselves into every country in the habitable globe and preach to all the inhabitants without exception or limitation. Well, of course, this flew in the face of the then accepted view of the Protestant churches that there was no mandate for foreign mission after the period of the first apostles. In the second section, he reviewed former undertakings, looking at men like Justin Martyr in the second century and John Calvin, who had said that the Great Commission had no statute of limitation. Go ye means you and now. In the third section, Carey surveyed the present state of the world and finally called the church to fervent and united prayer. He ended up by writing this, Surely it is worth while to lay ourselves out with all our might in promoting the cause and the kingdom of Christ. In May 1792, Carey preached a most significant and electrifying sermon. His text was Isaiah 54, verse 2 to 3. And his biographer, Timothy George, writes this. Carey took the prophet's words addressed to ancient Israel in a time of distress and applied it to the church in his day. Indeed, there was much in his own experience of the church to conform the sullen image Isaiah paints. A barren widow, bereft of her husband, with no offspring to give her hope or cheer. Yet the prophet calls for rejoicing, not lamentation, for celebration, not sorrow. The promise is this, God is about to restore the church and his work will be extraordinary and wonderful. There is to be an enlargement in God's people, a bringing in of others on the right and the left, a winning of the Gentiles who are yet to be included in the covenant of grace. The burden of Carey's sermon came to a crescendo in a summarising couplet. Expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. Expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. And that should still say, stay the same today. That we should expect great things from our God as we unite in prayer. As we believe him that even though in these days, 
unprecedented as they are, we will still attempt great things for him. It doesn't matter who we are. We all need to have vision like William Carey. A vision for the world. And of course the world starts with our own family, our neighbours, people down the street, our town, our nation. Let us pray for Doncaster. Let us believe for Doncaster. Let us believe God for our churches. Nothing is too difficult for God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for men like William Carey who went out into the world to preach the gospel. Holy Spirit, you lay on our hearts that same enthusiasm and passion that Carey had for missions. Lord, yes, it starts at home, but Father, give us grace. Give us anointing of the Holy Spirit to speak your words to the people that are all around us. By, not just by our words, but by our actions. Holy Spirit, you speak through us. You work through us so that we will see and believe great things from God and attempt great things for him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great day. Remember, God is with us. God bless you.